There's no doubt that we're seeing volatility in this market. But what does this volatility mean for us? Why is it happening? What is actually going on with the lending community? Where can we see things going in the next few months and even in the year? And what are the opportunities out there? And how can you prepare for this uh, change that we're going to see in the next few years? So watch this video uh, and let me know what you think. Like and comment, guys. And if you haven't subscribed, do it. What are you waiting for? Hi, it's Pai. I'm here from Niche Advice. Right, things are actually getting interesting in the mortgage market, if, if I could say that in the same sentence, because mortgages are not the most glamorous of things. But I love it, and I've been doing this for many, many years, and I have got quite a lot of um, connections within this world. Uh, and these are people that have been around for a very, very long time, and I've been privileged enough to know these people, and they are now very senior people at some of the, um, you know, some of the best lenders out there in the, in the UK market. So, what's going on? Well, what's going on is lenders are nervous. Products are being withdrawn, um, and there are a number of reasons for that. So let's talk about some of the reasons first. Um, the fundamental reason is, look, there's two ways lenders get their money, okay? There's the deposit way, so basically from savings account, or borrowing cheaply from the Bank of England, okay? So those are the two ways, and what you'll find is majority of the big banks, or majority of the banks, have got access to that. So savings account and obviously borrowing from the government or Bank of England cheaply. Okay. Then there's another batch of lenders who securitize, who basically get their money from the money markets. Now these could be huge multi multinational funds out there. It could be big investment banks. Essentially, what they turn around to those banks and say, "Look, um, lend us the money. We will give you this at um, we want it at two percent, for example." And then whatever rate that we make on top, whatever we have, that's our margin. But that institutional investor wants their 2%. By hook or crook, that's what the contracts are. So it doesn't matter if business is low. doesn't matter if your staff is sick. doesn't matter if this has happened. They want their investment. They want their 2% back. So what's happened? Well, what's happened in the market is that those guys, that price of that 2% is now maybe going up to 2.8% or 3%. So all of a sudden... They have to make that 3% and then they've got to add their own fee and generally that's reflected in the rest of the interest rate, admin fee, uh, lender fee, things like that. That's basically for the lenders. So they essentially become the big funds sales team. So it's their outsourced sales department. So it's interesting because what that's doing to the market is all these lenders that securitize, and let's talk about them firstly, all of these specialist lenders, and these are your smaller lenders, um, the ones that, you know, your limited company, buy-to-let lenders, a lot of them, you know, they deal, they deal with the specialist market. And what's happening is, they're all playing, play the hot, you know, pass the hot potato around. Because as soon as they've got a rate out there, they get flooded with business, and then everybody else is repriced, and all of a sudden they're left hanging with all these applications at a low rate, and essentially not making money in the back because they have to give their investors some money. By the time they've done the admin and dealt with all the processing, dealt with all the crap, they've got, they're making no money. So they're having to withdraw and then come back with new rates. And that's what's happening. And it's almost like pass it along with the different lenders. So that's one of the aspects. That's what's happened with the specialist market. And that's reflected in pretty much all the buy-to-let sector. Hey, let me get in here. I was watching the edit and I thought, oh, I forgot about something about the securitization model and lenders. And I thought I'll just add this bit in. I'm just going to cut it and add it here. And that's important because what's happening with these in institutional lenders, okay, these lenders um, could essentially walk away and say, Do you know what, we were making money. We're a bit nervous now. We don't want to lend you that money at 3%. We'd only really do it at 5% or 4%. Otherwise, count us out. What happens then? What happens to that lender? That lender's funding line. So the buy-to-let lender, let's put for example, or the adverse lender that you've got, all of a sudden, where they get their money, their funding line has dried up. And that's what essentially happened back in 2008. Lenders, money dried up. They physically had no money to lend. So I'm not saying that's going to happen right now or it's happening right now, but it's certainly that market is under pressure. 
and margins are being looked at. So these institutional renders are going, well, do you know what? I don't really like the risk. I don't really like the, you know, how is that, how is your, and then they'll start asking more questions. How has your book performed over the last years? All right, you've got X amount at 80% loan to value buy to let or late 80% loan to value. How has that performed? Oh, guess what? You know, you've got X amount of people lending at four and a half times income. How has that performed? They almost start going through the books. Now, I've had a case, and this is a live case, so I hope I don't jinx it, right? Um, I've, I've got a case which basically went into a lender. That lender is a pretty big lender as well, who securitizes. They essentially said, mm, the criteria doesn't, it doesn't quite fit our criteria. We need to go and get an exception. Now, normally, you just go and get an exception by an underwriter, right? This had to go to the underwriter, then a CD underwriter. Business development manager had to be involved, had to go through the key uh, uh, underwriter, had to then go and leave the lender and go to the funders. The funders had to okay the deal and then come back down. This was a residential mortgage, guys. We're not talking about a multi-million pound deal. This was your bog standard residential mortgage. Right? So this is what I mean. Those institutional investors have started getting a bit nervous and they're saying, well, do you know what? We'll only really make money if we lend it at this. So what's happening now? Well, we've been through this back in 2008. So there are a number of lenders right now that have got this model. Now, what they have done over the years is probably have four or five funding lines okay, open to them. So this is where if they've been clever, they haven't relied on one funding line. Because if that funder says, don't want to do it and that's what was happening back in 2008 honestly 2008 we were getting ceos of lenders coming in and see us and i used to work for a large entity at the time going oh we're going to be absolutely fine not having any control because the guy in new york who was in charge of the fund would literally phone him and say do you know what we're pulling your funding line that's it gone done dusted doesn't matter you got 500 staff doesn't matter you've offered you know on a thousand cases going through illegals we're not giving you any more money right so that's how funding lines work now obviously there's been a lot of regulation and a lot of due diligence and a lot of checking and that model is completely different or sort of different to, to back in the day but that's the model that's the money market model now what's happened the clever lenders out there they have essentially tried to tie up now those funders to them so it, this can't happen so the funders have got some sort of an interest in these lenders otherwise it's business. They'll just go, you know what, I'll take it somewhere else. The UK market's not that great. I'll take it to Spain and Germany. I'll take it somewhere else. I'll take it to a longer fixed model somewhere. So it, it, it'll be interesting. And we've seen a couple of lenders, specialist lenders, sell out. So we saw Fleet Mortgages, a buy-to-let uh, specialist lender. They sold out, or I think they partly sold out, to Starling Bank, right, to get access to that cheap money right we've just been it's been rumored that kensington mortgages they're looking they're up for sale so so i don't know if it's related to this however if you are a specialist lender and you don't have a secured distribution a, a locked a triple lock distribution channel i would be nervous right now um so um that's how the, the lending model works i'll leave it to the rest of the video now crack on right then you've got the um, deposit taking money, you know, the big banks, right? They're also nervous and they're also, their price of costs have gone up, but they're nervous because they, you know, they do volumes. They do millions of, 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 of you know, pounds of cases. So they don't want to be locked in at a cheap rate for the next five years. So what's happened to that market? Whether you're a, you're a, um, uh, a specialist lender or a high street lender, you're repricing. You're repricing for risk. And it's almost on a weekly basis. So we have also seen some major uh, high street lenders actually withdraw their five-year fix. So TSB, for example, they have another five-year fix, a buy-to-let five-year fix, not a residential, a buy-to-let five-year fix for a couple of weeks. So they have not offered their clients a five-year fix. Why do you think that is? I've just been told, and I'm not sure if it's just a reprice, but right now uh, I've been told all the more bank, another lender but this time uh, not a high street lender more of a specialist lender and they have withdrawn their five-year fixes now i don't know if it's a permanent move or whether it's just a reprice because it could happen you know they may have just been in the middle of a five-year fix uh, uh, 
pricing uh, change. So that's happening. So what's that going to do to the market? Well, obviously rates are going up, and you know, and I, I, I'll tell you a funny story. I've got, I've got obviously, um, I deal with professional landlords, people that have got 10, 15, 20 right to lets, and novice landlords, the people that have got one or two. So, and obviously, when I deal with the more professional landlords, I speak to them constantly dur during the year. And I've been remortgaging these people for years. Now I send them a remortgage quote for one of their buy to lets. It's almost I swore. It's almost as if I swore on the email to them. What do you mean the rates this? What do you mean Priam? What? That's there's no margin in that. And I'm going well. Turn on the BBC. You know, that's what the market's like. And trust me, I've given you the best product out there. Now, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how. And these people have, have done well out of property. Let's be honest; they've done very, very well. Um, some of them came to me with, you know, fifteen odd years ago with no buy to lets. You know, their first residential mortgage I was doing, and now they've ended up with a lot of buy to lets. So they've done very, very well. Um, however, there are a lot of what I call YouTube um, investors that, you know, I, I I've said this before. It's a worst nightmare when I hit, when I read, or when I watch. I had no properties last year. I now have got seven properties and they're all stacked up at 80% loan to value because I've refinanced all of them. Well, mm, that is tricky because if you've got such a high LTV across your portfolio, I would be nervous right now because your margin's getting squeezed. Everything's going get, to start, get, start getting squeezed. Granted, property always performs pretty well, but you've just sort of got to have that money in the bank just in case things go wrong. So, what does this all mean? If you're a first-time buyer, a next-time buyer, or a buy-to-let investor, it means it's bad news, but also good news. Okay, it means volatility is going to make people think. People are getting nervous. People that were going to buy investment property that may not do so now. People that were going to buy their first-time buyer or next-time buyer an upgrade that may not do so. Doubt is creeping in, right? People are going, oh my goodness, yeah, I can afford it right now. What if the interest rates hit this? What if the market does that? What if the property prices come down? So doubt will start coming in. Because right now, to the normal people, those people that are not watching my channel, you know, they're going to see the estate agent and the estate agent saying, the pro sorry, the property's gone. Sorry, we've had 50 viewings and we've had 10 offers over the pro over asking price. That's what the market doing right now. Okay, but where is it going to be in the next few months or, or a year? Okay. And this is the time we can prepare because there are going to be opportunities in this market. There are going to be, this is where we can get in. Those people that have not, frankly, made their money out of buy to let investments or residential properties, they can get in. There's going to be an opportunity coming up, right? Because a lot of the people are going to be nervous, okay? Some people may have had all their money. They've stacked their money already. But there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines waiting to go in. And that's where the opportunity comes in. There's going to be less competition for you, whether you're buying a residential property or a buy to let property. Um, there's going to be, um, it's going to be more expensive, shorter term. I think loan to values are going to start getting affected. Valuations are going to start getting affected. Now, we haven't had this for a good number of years where, you know, of course we get the down valuation when people are actually trying it and saying, oh, my property is worth half a million, but it's really worth 450. You get that all the time in every market. But genuine down valuations are going to start happening. This is where people are thinking their property is worth this and it's now worth this. Okay, Maybe it was that three months ago or six months ago, but it's not now. Now, I don't think it's going to be a collapse of the market. It's, I don't think that's, going, that's the way it's going. To, there's just so much demand there. But there's going to be opportunities and less people going for those things. So get yourself prepared. Um, work with a good broker, work with a good accountant, work with a good solicitor, get your stuff sorted out, get your account sorted out if you're self-employed, get ready, get your deposit sorted out, get your source of deposit sorted out, do your research because this is going to be opportunity and this is where the people that have done their homework will frankly make their money or will succeed and I, I, and, and I think businesses are going to succeed and fall. OK, if you are a business and if you're in a business and I, this is my own thoughts, really, if you are in a volume driven business in anything, I would be worried a little bit because I think once the economy starts slowing down further, anything to do with volume, unless you're in food or something like that, you know, um, anything to do with volume, it's going to be under pressure.
okay so um let's it'll be interesting let me know what you guys think let me know about this market let me know what you think have you got money on the sides looking to come in are you a first-time buyer looking to come in are you a buy to let investor that's maybe invested right the way through the last 10 15 years are you someone that went through the last crash what did you learn from the last crash i was there what did you guys do um so let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.